Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 11 in the authentication module titled Password Reset Poisoning via Middleware. All right, let's get started. This lab is vulnerable to password reset poisoning. The user Carlos will carelessly click on any links and emails that he receives. To solve the lab, log into Carlos's account you can log into your own account using the following credentials, and you're giving credentials to a regular user account. Any email sent to this account can be read via the email client on the exploit server. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit a vulnerability in the password reset functionality in order to access Carlos's account. Okay, let's get started. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version of Burp, however, you don't need to use the professional version for this lab, and so any features that I use here will be available in the community edition as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is click on my account and understand how the forgot password functionality works. To do that, we're gonna use our regular user account, which we have access uh, to his account and then also to his email client. So let's click Submit. You see over here, it performs a forgot password request that sends a password reset link to your email. So let's send this one to Repeater and we'll review it later. Let's go to the exploit server, go down, click on email client, and you could see over here, we have an email to reset our password. So let's click on that. And again, let's send this request to repeater. So this is the request that is responsible for generating this page over here. And then let's say we change our password to password. And again, password, hit submit. And let's send this request again to repeater. All right, so we've got three requests that are responsible for performing the password reset functionality. So the first one is this one over here when you click on forgot password and then you submit the username of the user. And then the second request is the one that is uh, sent to your email. So what happens is that you're sent a temporary forgot password token that is tied to your user session. So this is tied to uh, my regular user account. And then this request generates the page, which allows you to put in the new password. And then once you put in the new password, it allows you to change the password. So the temporary forgot password token is right over here. And the new password, I just reset it to password. And again, password over here. All right, this all looks good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see if this request over here supports the X forwarded host header. And if it does, then we might be able to perform a header injection that will allow us to bypass controls in the application. So let's see if it accepts that header. So let's say X forwarded host. And for the host, let's put our exploit server link. So let's copy this. Put it in here and hit send. And we get a 200 OK. So this is already a good sign that it does support this header over here. Now let's go to the email client and see if we got a link, and we did. So you could see over here, this was the link that we used to reset the password. And notice over here that you've got the host of the application. So if we go over here for the origin, here we go, that's the origin or the host of the application. So it's done correctly over here, and then you've got forgot password, and then you've got the temporary forgot password token. However, when we included this header over here and said, hey, listen, the host is not that one, it's this one over here, which is equal to our exploit server, what it did is that the application automatically trusted that this is the host and it generated the temporary forgot password token and it appended it to what it thinks is the host of the application. However, this is our exploit server. So this is bad because the way we're gonna exploit this is we're going to change this to Carlos. And hit send. We get a 200 okay. 
So what happens right now is this is going to send Carlos an email to Carlos's email that has this link over here. Now Carlos, when he opens that email, he's going to see that he needs to reset his password and he's going to click on the link. Now, when he clicks on this link, it's not going to redirect him anywhere. However, it'll make an entry in my lock server telling me that someone tried to access this directory in my exploit server. So if we go back to the exploit server right over here and click on access lock, we should see an entry from the Carlos user. All right, so Carlos definitely got the email and clicked on the link. You could see over here there's an entry from an IP address 10.0.4.214 and you could see it appended the temporary forgot password token of the user. So let's copy this and put it in here. And hit send. Now it's telling me I have a client error and that's probably because I pasted it incorrectly. Okay. So hit send. Let's render this over here. You could see over here this token is valid because if I had given it an invalid token, so let's say M, that we remove a letter, it'll tell you that it's an invalid token. So let's go back to our regular token. Hit send. And we know that it's a valid token. And now all we have to do is put in the new password of Carlos and it'll allow us to change Carlos's password. So we do that in this request right over here. Let's change the temporary token. We change it right over here as well. And then we're just gonna keep the new password at password and the new password to at password. So hit send. We get a 302, I believe that's a good sign and a 200 okay. So let's close all of this. Go to my account and see if the password reset was successful. So we're gonna say Carlos with the password password and hit login. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by performing a header injection in the password reset functionality. We usually script the exploit, however, because this does involve an exploit server, which I'm pretty sure the application only allows the user to click on the exploit server links, then we won't be able to script this in Python. Now in the next lab, we'll look at a different case of a broken authentication vulnerability. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.